Hey everyone, it's Terry with Terry's Tidbits, and I'm starting a new study group for the Sales Cloud Consultant exam. And I have that certification, but it's been years ago since I took this exam. And, it, and frankly, it was one I thought was kind of the hardest <laughs> exams, uh, mostly because you have to know the way Salesforce wants you to do consulting versus the way that maybe you've done it. And I've done consulting now for, for 16, 17 years. So um, anyway, we have 20 people who have registered for this, this particular study group. I think it's the largest study group now that I've got. And this is brand new content. So I hope that if you're studying for the Sales Cloud Consultant, that you'll consider watching this series of videos. You'll see a new video hit every week, um, except for over the week of spring break, we are gonna take that week off. But watch the videos if you're interested in this particular exam, and maybe it can help you out. Hey everyone, it's Terry with Terry's Tidbits. I am so glad you're here. All right, so high performers are naturally more goal-oriented. Goal Julie, do you think that's right? Some days, no, yeah. Some days, right. <laughs> um, they're focused on measuring outcomes and measuring results. And one of the things that I was seeing is this term, these, uh, when they look at sales metrics, they, they kind of bucket these into two different categories. The first is lagging indicators. The, the second is going to be um, leading indicators. And what, what's interesting with the lagging is that it's a lot of times when we talk to um, when we're, especially if you're in a consulting role, when you're talking with customers or sales directors, there's a lot of times the KPIs are often focused on lagging indicators. And a way to really identify the fact that it's lagging is we're using terms like last, previous, past, something that indicates that, that the work has already occurred. And so there's really not a lot you can do to change it. That's kind of the key concept with the lagging indicator. It just is. It's it's what has already happened. And so things like total sales by time period, sales by product or services, sales by a lead, uh, lead source, those are all things that have already occurred. And so that's a lagging indicator. The other is the leading indicator. This is really more real-time analytics of what's happening now. And the nice thing with the leading indicators is that you have the ability to make course changes or you can adjust and still end up meeting your goals or um, being able to track progress toward a goal. So that would be a leading indicator. Keywords might be things like next week or upcoming quarter, real time or current. Uh, something that's future or forecast might be an example of uh, leading indicators. Goals is another word that is a good indication of, hey, this is something that is probably going to be a leading indicator or something that I can impact, still impact the results to. So some examples might be goals to improve profit by sell or profit on sales by X percent. Number of calls to convert a lead. Now that one can What's interesting is I think about some of these, these and I, I really had to stop in my own mind and think, okay, number of calls to convert a lead, is that leading or is that lagging? And because it, it's kind of both, I may know what, what has been traditionally the, the reality. I know that if his, history tells me that if I make five phone calls to this lead, it's that they'll convert. That's that's a lagging indicator. I can also take and leverage that though and say, okay, I know that if I'm gonna call, if, if, if Jose, if you're my lead and I call you five times, I'm gonna be able to convert you. So if I'm at th call number three, then I know that I need to still make some additional phone calls on average to get you as a converted lead. So the difference between those two, it's it's, it's it's really watching the wording and one of the one of the things i did it's been years since i've taken this particular exam and it, of all of them that i've taken this one i i was literally down to like the last 2 to 3 seconds before i hit the submit button at the very end 
and I thought for sure it was going to be a fail on the on the end of it. It it wasn't. I did pass it, but um, it's really it's really important to watch the wording of of things. Uh, and with this exam in particular, for those of us that are consultants or or, or in sales language is ridiculously important and it needs to be the Salesforce way. Uh, so we may know as a, as a consultant, this is how we do things. But if we don't have an understanding of Salesforce's methodology, then we're going to struggle on this exam. I, I've had some really, really difficult exams that I've done and I would rank this one up high in that list primarily because of that very reason that I have the way that Terry thinks about doing it. And then there's the way Salesforce thinks about doing it. So just kind of keep that in mind as you, as especially as you're putting your presentations together, always source off of Salesforce. Otherwise, otherwise you might be headed in a wrong direction on that. So leading or lagging indicators. Question number one, is this leading or lagging? You can either talk to me or you can put it in chat either way works for me. Analyzing past data to see how many calls a tip, it typically takes to close a deal. Lagging. Lagging, lagging. All right, very good. And the key reason for knowing that is what? Past data. Past data, right, very good. Number two, using past data, the number of calls to close as a, or using past data, for the number of calls to close as a baseline to set expectations. That's worded very poorly, but um, would that be lagging or leading? We're using it as a baseline to set expectations. I would say leading. Leading, yes. If it wasn't for that baseline to set expectations, would it be lagging? Yeah, yeah. Very good. A business development team is using two different scripts for call, customer calls. Real-time analytics shows the first script is producing better results than the second. Leading. 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 Last quarter's profit margin per, per sales executive. Lagging. Lagging, yeah. Very good. All right, so that was the sales side, sales process, some of the, the analytics. Marketing is also a part of this part of the exam. So when we look at marketing, some common things uh, that marketing folks might measure or track will be customer acquisitions, uh, the marketing mix, uh, customer retention, social media impacts, segmentation, promotion strategies, branding, uh, pricing strategies, product or service strategies, new product and service development, and multi-channel marketing. That's a lot of words, and, and ideally, we would have definitions for that. Um, I may come back to the, my slide deck and just add some definitions around some of these so that you'll have it in the slide deck. Some of them I wasn't as quite as familiar with. Obviously, customer acquisition, that's that's You'll, you'll hear in the sales world, a lot of times we'll use the term new logos versus existing. So how many brand new customers? Uh, so that's a customer acquisition. Uh, the marketing mix, um, that, that could be defined a variety of different ways, I think. So, uh, But I'll go through and I'll, I'll add some definitions to each of these so that you'll have them. Uh, and... Then the use of, of sales and marketing analytics is not an end. It's a way to measure, measure your company's progress toward goals. All right. Uh, keep the following items in mind. Getting the metrics to the right people is an important step. Um, Mid-level and frontline people who uh, are, who can, actually change, have an impact, it makes sense to get them this, this information. So if we're working on leading indicators and we want to in, in have an increase or better chance of meeting those goals, we can't just keep this a secret at the executive boardroom level. It has to be shared with the right 
uh, level of people who actually can have an impact there. Goals need to be articulated and uh, measured properly to be effective. One of the things that, that I think can be a challenge is it's easy to put a non-measurable goal out uh, in front of people. But so always come back, making sure, can we measure this? And if we can't, it's probably not going to be a very effective goal. Get the entire team involved. Make sure it's communicated so everybody knows uh, what's going on. The, the recommendation is always start with a few metrics. So if you come at a group with, with 50 different goals, it's going to overwhelm the entire team and they're not going to meet any of those goals. I've always been told and there's I think evidence supports it that generally speaking, you want you don't want to have any more than three. Uh, three is what people can kind of tend to manage to. Uh, so don't overwhelm the team. Use customizable dashboards uh, for analytics to drive sales. Uh, so that all of us who have our admins, we kind of understand that piece of it. So make sure we have dashboards that uh, support the metrics that we're measuring. And then as an easy, easy one, they said is to uh, set activity goals based on analytics must be clearly defined and measurable. This is a Salesforce one. I don't necessarily agree with, um, but it is a Salesforce one. I fall more in the camp of if I'm going to measure activity, I, I, I really could care less about the number of phone calls it takes. I care about the deals that they close and the end game. If it takes them five, five phone calls to make to close the deal, then it takes them five phone calls. If it takes the other person two, great. Let's learn from the two guy. But to me, at the end of the day, it's all about what did you close less and less about the process per se, but that's Terry's method, not Salesforce. Sales process is a, a series of steps that move a, move a sales rep from product. I'm listening. And, uh, from product and marketing uh, research through the sales, through, uh, through the sales close and beyond. So sales process is a term that you're going to want to know for this exam. The number of steps can vary by industry product prospect, but they're, they tend to fall into four key stages, and that's research, prospecting, sales, sales calls to close, and then relationship building. So researching is making sure you understand who your customer is, who are you targeting, prospecting, oops, sorry, prospecting is then... Uh, the the process of identifying those the the market or the people who who fit um, what you're your um, what you're trying to sell your sales calls and closing that's the actual getting on the phone making the deal happen and then relationship building is the ongoing support so those are the four steps uh, that they mention in the process. And then the, the document that I was reading kind of confused me because then it gave me this main sales process steps and the other one was called process steps too. But so I don't know, I'm not sure exactly how to determine the difference between these, but um, they say, make sure you understand your product, Re research your ideal uh, prospect, begin prospecting or lead generation. So that's business development. Qualify those prospects, analyze the needs, and then uh, do your sales calls, follow up and close the deal, and then nurture the relationship. So those, to me, sound an awful lot like kind of the mix of lead statuses all the way to your opportunity uh, stages. Common mistakes that are made is poor preparation no needs analysis so we don't do a discovery call to understand what their what their needs are making a sales pitch before we've qualified them highlighting product features and not the value i thought that was kind of an interesting one um, for those of us who've done sales sometimes that's that's easy to do um oops sorry not being empathetic talking too much being underprepared for objections Making sales calls too long. I hate those. Uh, waiting too long uh, for follow-up. Salespeople, you agree with that? 
that make and then sales yeah. process i was going to say in this day yeah. and age as far as waiting too long everything needs to be instantaneously so yeah i don't know <laughs> it's a different yeah. world yeah very good um and i'm going to just run through this fast and then meredith i'm going to turn it over to you because you only got 15 minutes left um sales process and sales methodology the the big difference is the sales process is the what it's what you're doing the sales methodology is the how and understanding the difference between those or things that were um, definitely called out in this particular process. So resources that I found is on this topic is the salesforce.com um, CA hub. They just call it the sales, sales hub by Salesforce. I do have that link um, in our resource list. So it's in our spreadsheet. And then there's the marketing hub by Salesforce. Uh, that has its link and I've put those both in our spreadsheet for us. So I think that's what I have. So Meredith, I'll stop sharing and let you take over for the next step. And while you're doing that, I'm going to get assignments uh, set up for the next couple of weeks. I have uh, Alexa talking to me in the background. Well, I can't hear it, so. Good. Can you see my screen? Not yet. Not yet, okay. All right. Be good? That's good. All right, so this is my third study group with Terry had great experiences with the last two. And so I'm like, Terry, can we do another one? So I'm so glad that he's doing this. I just met the most awesome people in those study groups. And it's kind of like a virtual network. You can stay in touch and have that accountability, which I don't know about you all, but I just sometimes really struggle with that motivation to do it on my own. Um, so a little bit about me, I manage a Salesforce team. Um, I started out with Salesforce back in 2012. I've always been in the construction equipment rental industry. I spent a few years at a bank and found my way back. So here's some pictures from earlier in my career. Um, started out in marketing and then ended up, uh, my company invested in Salesforce and um, you know, used it for the sales cloud feature. So, you know, what Terry said about having three KPIs, that was definitely what we measured. And um, I started out as a trainer and then due to that success, moved into an admin role and kind of moved up through there. So um, I've been on a few Salesforce podcasts. Uh, my hobbies, I love Salesforce conferences. Um, during the pandemic, I moved back to Missouri. I had spent time in Houston and uh, Phoenix. And so I'm closer to family now. Um, the other thing I love working out and that really helps with my mental health. I'm a big mental health advocate and I am four times certified. So my topic is uh, sales practices. Uh, when I first saw this, I thought, this is a lot, <laughs> but I'll try to cover it all quickly. So um, the big kind of takeaway here is, you know, our audience of this tool of sales engagement, you know, there's all different roles within sales. You know, you think about the pandemic and work went remote. So, you know, 2020, you can imagine Salesforce Thought, what tools can we offer and sell to really grow our business? And with that virtual sales growth, that was 15 times the virtual sales grew over field sales. Do you think of outside sales reps going to see people in person? And then since 2021, 33% of the field sales went virtual. Another thing that I uh, read about in Trailhead is I think a lot of us who don't do sales or don't have experience with sales, haven't talked to someone who did sales, we think it's always talking to people. 
but it's not. A lot of it is doing research, you know, preparing, organizing, doing administrative work to prepare for those sales calls. So that's where sales engagement comes into play. So, you know, there's a lot of different tools available within sales engagement. And whenever I first saw this, the other name, it was called high velocity sales. I thought, what, what? It's just sales console. What's special about this? Well, it has a lot of really powerful features. We're using a lot of Einstein, which we know that's, you know, giving the algorithm information, um, you know, so that way it can tell you which of those leads are you most most likely to close. That's who you should be calling. It has this um, this work queue feature here. Um, and I'll go more into detail and then also the sales cadence. So it's kind of this one place. And you you all have probably worked in orgs where they're not Salesforce first and you maybe have shadowed your end users and they're flipping between six different programs and flipping in and out of email. And the idea is your inside sales team or maybe even outside sales could use this. It's kind of their one console that's gonna boost their productivity. It's gonna tell them what is that next step. They don't have to spend all this time trying to you know, slice and dice list views. It gives it all for them. And then, you know, from a sales leader standpoint, faster onboarding. So you're not spending so much time training, ideally, it's telling you where your team needs to focus. So the first features I wanted to go through are the work queue and sales cadences. So this work queue that you see tells you, you know, here's your prioritized, prioritized list of your emails, so you can see this little email icon, and then also your call. You also have these custom sales actions, which I think are maybe around here. I, I need to play with the tool to really, you know, understand it super well. But um, the other thing we have here is if you're on a list and you want to add it to what they call a sales cadence, um, this tool is available for sales leaders to kind of set in an ideal scenario, what would those steps be that the sales user, user should take? So for example, they go to a trade show and they get a, a card. From there, they're going to load that card as a lead. And then they're going to reach out the next day. Maybe they reach out as a phone call. They don't hear back. They leave a message. Then they need to wait two days. Then they want to call again. Maybe then they want to send an email. So it kind of guides them through those different paths that they should be taking. And that sales cadences. And this tool, I thought at first this was flow, but this is really awesome because it looks like sales leaders can actually build out their own sales cadences. So if you're a sales admin, like, isn't that awesome that this doesn't go onto your plate as another task for you to manage? This is something that your sales leaders that are tech savvy could build this out themselves. And then the other thing that they have is out of the box reporting for the sales cadence. And they had this one and one other that they talked about. So you can see the benefits of how that sales cadence is performing. Uh, the next two are sales dialer and inbox. So with sales dialer, you know, you're able to um, just click here. It's integrated with whatever telephone program you're using. You can make calls, notes, leave messages, and pre-recorded messages. So you're not having to, you know, take your team's time to repeat that same script. It's just pre-recorded. And then within that inbox tool, you can check, you know, calendar availability. Um, you can, it will recommend connections because I think there's a connection with LinkedIn Navigator. You can schedule meetings to send later. And then, I mean, this one, I think if we had this at my company, our sales reps would love it, is seeing, you know, when did they open that email, that client? When did they click? When did they reply? It's all right there. So, and then you can also integrate this with your, um, current inbox, they have Gmail here, but it also integrates with Outlook. 
So I don't know if you all remember that Salesforce for Outlook integration was terrible, and I'm so glad that's retired. Um, so this looks like a paid version of a replacement for that. Uh, the next one is Einstein Conversation Insights. So this is a tool that, um, just to point out, it has um, the recording is managed through an outside telephony provider. So Salesforce doesn't want to take on that, I guess, liability of being that provider of the data, but it kind of connects with that system. And with that, you're able to quickly, as an inside sales leader, you're not having to listen to every single recording. It actually gives you the keywords. So you can say, I want to know every time they talk about discount or mention certain products. And with that, those mentions will go onto a dashboard and you can analyze transcriptions and, you know, kind of process those conversations. And they talked about, you know, having that available and sharing those wins and rec like kind of playing that in a sales meeting, like this call went really well. And so you're saving time from that sales leader perspective. And then you're also able to coach and share best practices. Um, and one other note is that these call recordings are controlled by the role hierarchy. So it's not like any, you know, inside sales rep can hear anyone else's conversation. The next one is um, Einstein activity capture and lead scoring. So, you know, you base it on um, you inputting certain information, like certain industries, you know, you do well with, you're going to add that and say this. Is, should get a higher score or um, certain geographic areas maybe are more likely to close. Um, so all of that, you know, Einstein activity capture is going to be synced with your email, your calendar and any Salesforce record so that your team can prioritize those interactions, maybe opportunities, leads, that kind of thing. So this one is near and dear to my heart, which is Salesforce Maps. Um, back in 2016, it was called Map Anything. My company at the time was, was called Blue Line Rental. They merged with United Rentals. So it's a very you know heavy equipment construction rental type of company. One of the things that we did was we had an event that we would have monthly in different areas, and it was called a sales blitz. So you would think of these, um, we would open in a new market. So let's just say we're opening a new branch in Orlando. So two sales reps would get together in that truck. They would go out and, you know, knock on doors, try to find clients within that area. And so we use this tool to plan all of our routes. Um, and that way, you know, I did all of this preparation, created these, you know, map tear, map layer, or sorry, shape layers with the boundaries. We use the pins, which is basically any record in Salesforce that has an address can be mapped on here. And we would send that route to each team. So that day, whenever they logged in, they would look at their map and they would go through and start making their calls. And you can actually click within here and log your call. And so I also had a dashboard available. So the, you know, region leaders that invested in having all these sales reps drive in and have a steak dinner the night before, they could see the results of those calls. And they kept investing in that because they saw the ROI of having a dedicated team. And they also, you know, the team saw so much time saving because you know, they weren't using what they call the star method driving all over. They were following the most efficient route. So that's Meredith. what I got. That's Any really cool, questions? Meredith. Yeah. That's really neat. That's cool. I loved it. Yeah, very creative.